Hello, welcome to Bahanam Guitars. This video is just a simple one showing some tricks that I utilize in my own building and repair when I'm using hot high glue, uh, specifically when I'm gluing on a bridge, but any other time these uh, tips work. The video will start with about two minutes from a previous video, just showing quickly uh, the viscosity of the high glue and uh, everything else is new footage. And the seventh tip right at the end is the most important one you'll ever hear. <laughs> so stick around. So 192 is the only gram strength you need. This is the consistency that I like to use. It's a consistency that is <laughs> between runny and not runny. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. So the consistency I like to see is when you lift up the brush, it starts off a constant stream and then it gets, after a couple of seconds, it just becomes a bit more drippy. I don't really know how else to describe it. The best way to do it is just to look at it and so you can see what I'm talking about. There would be some instances where I would want maybe a th slightly thicker consistency and the the working time and the strength of the glue isn't particularly affected by if you go outside that consistency it's a little bit thinner a little bit thicker if it was a little bit thicker than this i'd be happy as well and it will be a little bit thicker than this in an hour of, of this being on because the water the 50 percent water that is in this will evaporate slowly and it will get thicker like i mentioned when it gets when it gets to a point where it's kind of just dripping in blobs or really slowly then you've got to add more water the next trick i want to show you is just how to locate something quickly and by locating i mean with tight bond you have the opportunity to put the glue on, go pee, and then come back and then put the bridge on. But with high glue, you don't have time for that. So this has to go on exactly where it needs to be and you gotta clamp it real quick. So I'm gonna show you a tip I use from a friend of mine, Chris Dungey, who's a cello maker in town. So what I use to quickly locate a bridge when I'm using high glue is masking tape. Just the cheapest roll of masking tape you can find because what I'm gonna do is cut into it. I don't measure it, but it's it's probably one millimeter thick, one thirty second, and it creates a really nice dam to butt anything up against. It's 0.8 of a mil or 33 thou. So that, and so say I wanted to clamp this here, I cut it from here and then I use the side that's f very flat to butt up against the bridge and i put those all around so two there two on this side and one on each end and i can just clamp it right in place really quickly just make sure you butt these up right up against it and now that's not moving at all either way so it's a really excellent way and a, a fail safe way to use high glue on a bridge which you you don't want it to gel you've got to get clamps on quickly through the sound hole it's kind of a you know even using tight bond I, I kind of feel like I'm rushing a little bit but with high glue that feeling is even more so until you start using this okay so here's the uke here's the bridge what I'm gonna do first is lay down some low tack tape and uh, Stu Max sell this stuff. Um, I'm gonna be using the one inch wide one. They also sell a three inch wide one. This one inch stuff is really good. Peel it back a bit, just create a tab so it doesn't stick to anything. Creating the little tabs just makes it far easier to remove. See, but I lay down this tape about 1 32nd, one mil away from the uh, scored bridge footprint. And then do the same thing for the ends. So why I do this will become apparent later on. So just make sure that the bridge is exactly where you want it because it's the first chance and the last chance you have to screw it up and get it right. Where I just cut this piece, that is the cut line and this is the side. I know that is going to be flatter than the piece that I cut. Push it right up against the bridge. So the tighter these tabs are, the better the look quick locating will be. You don't want any movement in the bridge when you lay it down. So a quick word about calls. Uh, when you're gluing on a bridge or any weird shaped object, make a call that matches the shape of the thing that you're gluing on. It just makes clamping so much easier. And uh, for my bridge calls, I cover the bottom of them in cork and then I wrap the entire 
call in uh, masking tape. The tape also helps with the call not gl getting glued accidentally to the bridge. And you can see this central call is shaped in a kind of a strange way for the, the radius of the back of the bridge. Another thing on the bridge, which I didn't show, wax the entire thing so glue doesn't stick to it. Quite important. What I said before, it's beneficial to heat up the bridge and whatever you're gluing the bridge to. What I'm going to do, while I'm working on other stuff and getting uh, a few other things ready, I just put the bridge on the glue heater and that will heat up enough to be to give me some more open time enough open time to uh to do the job really well and go flawlessly knock wood <laughs> i am filming and everything goes wrong when you're filming heat this up a little bit you know, it gets hot pretty quick actually this this is far hotter than a hairdryer so I'm just bringing the glue pot close to the job. So I'm not very clean when it comes to this and I'll talk about that in a second. So the moment of truth. I like to use a lot of glue when I'm gluing bridges on. I like a lot of squeeze out and you'll see why later. Uh, but there is a benefit uh, to using a lot of glue and that is it has more mass. And when you have a lot of glue, it retains its own heat for longer. Uh, longer than if you put a really thin layer of glue down, it would uh, cool quicker. So there is a benefit to using a, a whole bunch of glue. And it, the cleanup is easy and you'll see why in the next tip. When you're clamping down, just have all the clamps and the calls ready and clamp the middle part first because that's usually the easiest because it's the flattest area. The final tip is an egg timer. And you'll see why in exactly 15 minutes. If you wait 15 minutes instead of trying to clean up the glue right now you'll have a far easier experience to clean it up just wait 15 minutes don't touch it don't worry about the tape or anything just leave it for 15 minutes and you will be far happier by the way this is a good egg timer um i had another one this just ticked away like i'll show you and that is so annoying so i got this one if you don't have an egg timer and need to buy one, I'd recommend this one. I only recommend this one because it's silent. Um, just get a silent one, otherwise the ticking will drive you crazy. <laughs> um, I actually use that for if I'm doing two glue up jobs or something. They're, they're really handy to have, especially you need one egg timer, I would say, if you glue stuff to other stuff regularly, um, especially high glue. <gasps> Okay, so 15 minutes is up, and instead of doing what most people do, which is just glue the bridge on or glue something on and then clean it up, and I find it's a bit messy and it kind of introduces water, possibly introduces water underneath the, the glue joint. Um, this is what I do, and this is why I do it. So when you wait 15 minutes and you've waxed off the bridge, which I forgot to do, uh, it makes the residue clean up just so much easier. There's just 95% less, sometimes there's zero, literally zero. So it really is an effective way to uh, stop any residue. I forgot to mention to leave the glue pot on just so you have the hot water. And when you dip the brush into the still warm water, it, uh, it helps remove any residue that is around and it comes in handy in the next little part which is just using the same technique with some paper towel but the even if you get some residue it comes off super quickly and just use a you know a damp not wet brush okay so I've just removed any bits of glue that remain just any residue stuff so what I want to do now is just wet some paper towel and just make sure the residue of the residue of the glue is removed. That might sound a bit pedantic, but it's easier to remove the residue of the residue now than later on. And if you have used high glue or any glue before, you know what I mean. But it's easy to remove if it dries and everything. But what you really don't want is for the an actual blob of glue to glue onto the finish because then it can chip away the finish when you remove the uh, clamps and you're cleaning up doing a final cleanup tomorrow so with that I just leave it overnight it's um it is three o'clock now 
I'm just gonna leave this until the next day, till tomorrow. And that's that. Here's a second bit of footage that I wanted to show. Uh, this is a guitar, all the same thing, just using tabs and everything. But I had a little bit of a problem with the clamp that I'm doing now, the treble clamp. Uh, the most important thing that you want is just to get a clamp on there, even if it's not sitting very well. You want to, uh, you just want to get some pressure on there, and then you can come back and uh, fix it up. And that's the most important thing. And then the cleanup is exactly the same. Just wanted to include this footage just to show you how easy it is. So I've done a uke bridge and a steel string bridge. This is a classical bridge and the technique is exactly the same. Just low tack tape with the uh, masking tape dams and just clamp appropriately with as many clamps as you need for the length of the bridge. And the uh, I use the same 15 minute technique here and also waxing off the bridge. Uh, I didn't use calls on some of those feet, but I did use the big Teflon uh, feet to expand out the clamping pressure. And you can see there the nice glue squeeze out, which I leave for about 15 minutes before peeling back. So that is my quick tutorial on how to mix up high glue and uh, some easy tips on how to use it. Just heat up the substrates, whatever you're gluing, and heat up the thing that you're gluing it to if you can. Uh, put tape, if you're doing a bridge or a fingerboard extension, put some tape down, uh, use some tabs for a bridge. Uh, another tip is to, which I didn't show, I forgot, was to wax the bridge. Just wax anything you don't want glue to stick to. It just makes the peeling away a little bit easier. Clamp it up quickly and then wait 15 minutes. You know, you can wait half an hour. I've waited uh, up to, I think it was 50 minutes or maybe an hour and it was the same result. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that was of interest and you learnt a few things. The low tack tape with the um, the waxing of the bridge and just leaving it for 15 minutes has really, really helped clean up everything. Uh, it was kind of funny that I, that I forgot to uh, wax the bridge in the footage, but anyway. <laughs> Uh, the promised seventh tip is thus, uh, be kind and share your knowledge because no one else can or will and could be lost. That's why I do these videos. So thanks so much for watching, like and subscribe and leave a comment, all that sort of thing and see you next time, bye. Thank you for your happy hour, country songs and whiskey sires. Can cheer up any man who's feeling down We say Jesus ain't